Okay, welcome everyone again, once again uh, to Mr. Masharin. Uh, Bate Adibalo is uh, online now and we are on live on Facebook. We shall now hand over the session to Bante. Over to you, Bante. Thank you, Terence. All right, so welcome back, everybody. So now is the uh, round two, right? Now it's the round two, second round of talks for today's uh, retreat. <clears throat> yeah, so today's uh, talk is more on mindfulness. Right? So mindfulness like encompasses like almost everything. So uh, earlier on, we talked about the first uh, half of the session. We talked about this mindfulness of the body. So we covered you know, about almost everything, right? One to six. So yeah, so now we're at number six. <clears throat> so stages of uh, body, bodily decomposition is uh, practiced in the Buddha's time, right? There were uh, groups of uh, very underprivileged people that cannot afford a uh, proper uh, kind of body kind of cremation or burial, then they will uh, you know, resort to this. There's a special place or maybe places where bodies are being sort of dumped there. So there's not even buried. Yeah? So it's like on the surface, on the ground. They are like being like thrown there, right? So uh, these are the places where uh, monks go and meditate. Right, the Buddha even encouraged monks to <coughs> go and uh, sit down there and observe the bodies. Right? So uh, they observe, so one day I will become like that. So there's a kind of reflection. So there are, uh, if I'm not wrong, maybe nine stages. Yeah, nine stages of bodily decomposition from a fresh corpse all the way, you know, rotten all the way until it becomes skeleton and bones. Right? So this is the uh, nine stages you can see from the diagram. So it's all there, or maybe 11 stages, depending on how you separate. <clears throat> so there's uh, like a popular viral meme on Facebook, eh? some kind of chart where it shows uh, uh, no, different people turning to like skeleton, right? So uh, it's more like a anti, how do you call it? <clears throat> Anti-discrimination kind of poster, you know, when you're talking about racial harmony or religious harmony. So they show a picture, a skeleton, first skeleton, Chinese skeleton, second skeleton, Indian skeleton, <laughs> third skeleton, Malay skeleton, so on and so forth. Eh? A Buddhist skeleton, a Jewish skeleton, all skeletons, so all the same. Right? So uh, in the end, when we <clears throat> yeah, when we die, when we pass away, you know, we all end up like that. Right? So uh, <clears throat> this is one of the uh, contemplations. So the whole idea is uh, to be in line. The objective is to reduce uh, this greed right and clinging so that we can transcend uh, so-called suffering right so if we contemplate in a way where, where we can reduce uh, greed then that's correct right there are people uh, who sort of practice in a way that you no know, doesn't sort of uh, promote this end of desire i give an example uh, there are <clears throat> probably some years back i was introduced uh, a DVD, right? There's uh, some monks who do some body contemplation and they introduce this uh, body world, you know, there's some exhibition of plastination of the body parts. So there's this uh, particular scientist who headed the project and he's so proud, you know, and he showed the uh, parts of the body in display in the casing, show all the veins and all the nervous system that's able to plastinize and separate from the body. And say, look how beautiful, you know. So, so, uh, you know, so sometimes as a, maybe a scientist's point of view, they are very enthusiastic over their project. But again, uh, if a person, you know, develop, uh, we call it desire, you know, uh, you know, like the body is so beautiful, or even the, whatever we consider as ugly as beautiful, then uh, I think you know, something is, uh, how do you call it? It's not really transcendental. Yeah? It, doesn't, it doesn't let go of this clinging. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, slide. Terence? Okay. <clears throat> yep, so this is the... Uh, <clears throat> what we call a stock formula, right? So uh, I believe most of you have listened to music. Uh, so like in most music or any music, there's like a verse and there's a chorus, right? So uh, this is something like the chorus of the, the sutta, like the chorus of the sutta. That means uh, this verse, this particular phrase will be uh, sort of repeated every time 
uh, the Buddha mentioned something. So after he, he mentioned uh, this mindfulness of breathing, then you have this chorus, right? After he mentioned mindfulness of the four postures, then he mentioned this again. So total six times, right? So like almost everything you mentioned this. So, um, so I'm going to sort of read through. In this way, he remains focused internally and externally on the body in and of itself. So the first phrase it means, first sentence it means, you can be mindful of your body internally. That means your own body, right? This is internally. And externally means uh, you know, somebody else's body, right? So it doesn't always have to be your body all the time. So uh, for example, like, let's say looking at the, the dead corpse, right? So the corpse is uh, external, it's not your body. So it can be both ways. Uh, or he remains focused on the phenomenon of origination and passing away with regard to the body. So this is uh, what we are doing in the meditation and we are always emphasizing on the detachment, on impermanence, rising and falling, birth and death. So this is the uh, very important part. Or his mindfulness that there is a body is maintained to the extent of knowledge and remembrance. So if let's say the, <clears throat> you're unable to detect the rising and falling, you know, cannot see change, you breathe in, breathe out, right? cannot feel anything, you know, or you feel, feel the body or whatever it is, cannot feel anything, ah, then at least you're, you must be aware you know, uh, that your ob object is there, your meditation object is there. And he remains independent and unsustained by not clinging to anything in the world. Right? So that's the main <coughs> objective is to not cling to anything. Right? So if whatever meditation we do, you know, let's say maybe uh, breathing meditation, we breathe and we are so, uh, so attached, you know, we want to expect results. Or in walking meditation, you, know, you want to see rising and falling of the feet. So no matter what speed you walk, no matter how fast or slow, uh, you know, if you're attached, means you're attached. Right? If you have some expectation. So same thing, you know, if you're uh, too under-motivated, uh, you, know, you walk slow, also can fall asleep. Walk fast, also can fall asleep. So uh, you know, there, are, there are such things happening. So it's in the frame of mind. So I emphasize on the frame of mind, the detachment on the right thoughts, on this uh, rising and passing away. Right? So if we do not do this, then it becomes like ordinary breathing. You know? Anybody can breathe. Everybody breathes. Right? So what's the difference between ordinary kind of breathing and uh, you know, this uh, right mindfulness kind of breathing, right? So it's the, the mental kind of framework. Uh, similarly, uh, when we think of the body, look at the body parts, you know, any medical student, any uh, maybe Chinese medicine, uh, they do acupuncture, they study the chart, you know, or the meridian points, they study on the body, right? So their, their agenda and the goal is uh, also very different, right? From, uh, from let's say, a meditator. So similarly with the uh, other kinds of uh, meditation, right? So this is the chorus, uh, very important. Um, and uh, same thing when we talk about mindfulness of feelings and the rest, uh, this thing will pop up again. So this is uh, uh, very important. So <clears throat> if a particular verse keep popping up over and over and over again, that means it's trying to say it's very important. Okay, next. Okay, next is this uh, mindfulness of feelings, right? So feelings, uh, normally we say there are three kinds of feelings. Uh, now there's some even extend to 108, yeah? But uh, for practical reasons, we just stick to three, right? So they are painful feeling, pleasant feeling, neither painful nor pleasant. That means a neutral feeling. So it can occur physically, you know, in your body, or even mentally. You can uh, <clears throat> imagine, uh, make it up, right? So these are uh, uh, different aspects of feelings. You no know, three kinds of feelings: physically, three kinds mentally. So uh, again, similarly, after the uh, this particular portion, then they will uh, you know, repeat this uh, stock phrase, stock formula, or we call it chorus. Okay, next. Okay, so this is the stock formula. So in this way, he remains focused internally and externally 
on feelings in and of itself. Right? So uh, uh, sometimes it's got to do with uh, translation when we talk about uh, feelings here, again, uh, defined as pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral feeling, right? So uh, it's not the kind where you see the drama show, oh, I have feelings, you know, I have feelings for you, that kind of stuff. So uh, it is not that kind of feelings, uh, nothing to do with the romantic kind of uh, definition, but uh, this feeling is got to do with uh, a general classification, right? Either it's uh, uh, painful or unpleasant, or pleasant means uh, you know, something uh, pleasurable, nice, yeah? or neutral. That means neither pleasure nor painful kind of feeling. So this is a very general, so it can extend to, uh, let's say, if a person were to feel the four elements, you know, the earth, fire, wind, water, whatever it is in the, in the body, the temperature, warm or cold, you know, can be cozy, can be a nice feeling. It can be also unpleasant feeling if it's too... Uh, hot, right? Until you feel uh, uncomfortable and perspiring. So, you no, know, these are the uh, very general kind of classification. So, a person can be mindful <laughs> internally. That means within your body and externally. externally. So, this is a very interesting concept externally. Right? How can a person be mindful externally? So, this one has got to do with uh, some uh, EQ or sensitivity of the mind, right? So, if a person is more uh, sensitive, they can sometimes feel. You know, somebody is uh, maybe not happy. Somebody is angry, right? So you can uh, at least you're aware, mindful of uh, external somebody else's feeling, right? So this is uh, uh, the first sentence. The second one, or oh, he remains focused on the phenomenon of origination and passing away with regards to feeling. So again, it's uh, important. Uh, any object, if you uh, sort of stay with it for too long, then it will result in clinging, right? So the idea of observing impermanence is to be detached, right? So uh, the whole idea is not to purposely, you know, generate uh, false impermanent, impermanence, but to uh, you know, be a passive kind of state of mind and observe this uh, rising and passing away. And the... Uh, uh, and the third one, mindfulness, their, their feelings is maintained to an extent of knowledge and remembrance. Uh, same thing, if you are unable to detect any you know, rising and falling of the feelings, then it's good to uh, call it, you know, be aware you know, this feeling is there. So be, just be patient. You know, over time, uh, there might be some form of changes in the intensity. It can be pleasant uh, you know, for some time, but... The intensity might change. Uh, similarly, unpleasant no? intensity might change. So you just need to observe. <coughs> and he remains independent and stay not clinging right, to this uh, uh, any kind of uh, phenomenon. Okay, next. Okay, so now this is uh, a bit more technical, right? Now we're going to talk about the mind. So while he's clicking on and on, okay, one more. Okay, yeah. So these are the they call it the various states of mind. Sometimes we can even call it different kind of uh, emotions and different kind of cognitive uh, processes of the mind and different cognitive functions. So the first one, uh, the mind has uh, you no know, passion or without passion. That means a greedy mind or non-greedy mind. So the whole idea is to uh, be aware of them. Um, interestingly, in this particular practice, right, it's to sort of uh, observe in a passive way when you talk about mindfulness. Right? There are other meditation objects which are required to counter, counter this uh, uh, passion or counter this aversion. Right, so there are some meditation objects which are more proactive in uh, eliminating them. So when you talk about just being mindful, you know, just uh, observe the state of mind, then we have to be a passive observer. So even a greedy mind will arise, and sometimes you know, it may not stay. So if we uh, observe it in a proper, with the proper framework, this emotion won't last. Right? So our hormones in the body, you know, they are secreted, uh, they, they are meant to not last. 
and they, they have certain uh, sort of uh, duration. <coughs> uh, similarly, aversion and without aversion. So same thing, anger. The person has uh, uh, anger and on uh, without aversion, the mind without aversion. So it can be a mind of loving kindness or no, neutral state of mind. Right. So similarly, when a person is uh, uh, angry, if let's say you are already practicing this form of mindfulness for a long time, then it you know, might be habitual for you to just uh, observe you know, how this emotion arises, then you, know, you can let it linger there, then you just yeah, uh, we quite don't react, right? then this emotion will uh, fade away. Uh, <clears throat> let's say for beginners, right? I would uh, encourage you know, loving kindness, you no. Know, uh, it's more proactive in uh, sort of reducing or overcoming this aversion. So this is uh, another kind of practice. And the next one, delusion. Right? So a mind deluded and without delude. So deluded <coughs> can be very uh, a deep topic. So in short, delusion means a belief in a permanent kind of uh, self. That means uh, believing that the ego is permanent, right? So this is the uh, uh, delusion. Oh, I will live forever. You know? I will be young forever. I'll be healthy forever. You know? That kind of stuff. So it is a kind of delusion. Right? In last week's session, we talked about the uh, uh, right thought, right? So we talked about this, uh, the first spinning of the wheel of the Dhamma by the Buddha, when the Buddha preached the uh, Dhamma Chakapavatana Sutta, the first sermon. Uh, he talked about these three kinds of uh, desire, right? Kamatanha, Bhavatana, Vipavatana. So uh, these three is actually representing this uh, you know, greed, hatred, delusion. Right? Kamatanha means uh, wanting. So any state of mind that you wish to crave, you, know, you want some more, you want to pull, you want anything pleasant, you pull. So this is a mind of greed with passion. Right? Then aversion is uh, Vipavatana, anything that is uh, sort of unpleasant, you want to reject, you want to destroy, you want to annihilate, you want to push away. Right? So this is the other state of mind. And delusion would be a very sort of, we call it a lazy, kind of uh, comfortable state of mind. You know, when the mind is too relaxed, uh, then we think, oh, I want this pleasant state forever. You know? Or you're too comfortable, everything's fine for you. you know? I want to be maybe healthy or wealthy forever, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is a kind of delusion, right? So when a person uh, is meditating, they have to know these states of mind. So how to tell you know, whether you have this uh, greed, hatred, delusion? So in the first part of the practical session, uh, we talk about this asupa practice and the first thing of the hair, for example. So the first instruction is to you know, tell you wish the hair well and happy, right? So this is the first instruction of the meditation. So before you wish the hair well and happy, so that is the state of mind that might contain aversion. So once you wish the mind well and happy, and the mind is able to calm down, right? Then that is a mind sort of at least without aversion for that moment. So this is uh, for you to differentiate later. Yeah, in the practical session, it's good to observe, right? Before. Uh, I talk about this. These things also happen, but just that you never take note, right? Now you, uh, now you know more terms, more jargons, more stuff, then uh, more things to look out for. Okay, so same thing without uh, passion, right? So uh, before I give the instruction, you know, uh, that the hair is impermanent, you go through birth and death, right? Then you think, oh, the hair is uh, it's forever, you know? So this is a kind of delusion. Right, so once you think the hair is uh, growing, uh, decaying, passing away, then the, this uh, greed, right, this passion will uh, reduce, and uh, the illusion, right, will also uh, reduce. So this is uh, for you to observe the difference in the emotion and the states of mind, and eventually I also add another question, right? Uh, is this hair truly yours? Right. So uh, uh, how many of you get stunned by the question, right? So if you get stunned by the question, so there's like a transition between a deluded mind to slowly to a not uh, deluded mind. You sort of like want to wake yourself up. Right? So this is uh, just a temporary change of emotion. Right? It's still not like 
uh, without delusion means like as if you no, know, like we are enlightened like that. No, uh, still far from it. There's still the beginning. And the next one we talk about the uh, mental processes, <clears throat> the cognitive processes of the mind. So the mind can be <clears throat> restricted or scattered, right? So in the second phase of meditation, where we talk about uh, watching the breath, you know, when you unify the mind to one small area, single point, so we are restricting the mind, you know, restricting the area, right? So the mind is restricted, you have to know it's restricted, and scattered mind is like right now, you know, the mind is all over the place, you know, it can be seeing, hearing, smelling, thinking, tasting, so this is a scattered mind, right? So in the previous uh, retreat, right, in the last week's retreat, we talk about the undirected meditation, so uh, after the mind is restricted and develop concentration, then we will move on to the scattered mind because that is the daily, uh, we call it the day-to-day -day functions kind of uh, mental operation. So we need to uh, train this aspect of the mind even in the scattered or undirected framework, we also can be detached. So we are actually bringing the training over. Uh, <coughs> then... Enlarge, not enlarge, right? So uh, this one is the, the loving kindness part, no? When we talk about uh, we wish one area well and happy, so this is uh, uh, slowly enlarging the loving kindness, no? We feel the house, feel the world. We have loving kindness, enlarging the mind. So not enlarge, so it's, uh, that's before you radiate loving kindness, so that's not the, uh, that's the unenlarged mind. And uh, surpass, unsurpass. So... This one is like your own best score. So you know yourself, uh, I don't know, your mind has it, uh, no? what's the best uh, peaceful state you have? Or what's the most pleasant and peaceful state you ever had? So has it surpassed it yet? Yeah? So this one is for your own uh, personal record. Of course, there's another interpretation, no? surpassed, whether is it a, a aria mind or a non-aria mind, that's another interpretation. Right, so that again is, uh, uh, we might talk about it later. Yeah, it's uh, under the Dhamma, mindfulness of the Dhamma. <clears throat> then the next one is concentrated, not concentrated. So again, uh, let's say when a person is practicing uh, <clears throat> uh, Samatha meditation, right? So either the mind is uh, concentrated. So last week's session, we talked about various kinds of concentration. Yeah, concentration from the, uh, the jhanas, concentration from uh, visualization, the light emitter, there's another kind of concentration. And the third kind is uh, like right now, if a person is observing, is rising and falling, that is another kind of concentration. And eventually, uh, if a person were to practice this uh, rising and falling and uh, sort of you know, totally detached and the mind develops another kind of concentration. So uh, you know, there are four kinds in the Samadhi Sutta. And eventually, you know, release or not release, right? So if a person is liberated or not. So only when the person uh, sort of uh, achieves right, the last kind of Samadhi, right, the objectless or the effortless kind of Samadhi, then it's uh, quite close. Right? Then you know the mind is uh, released from these uh, five aggregate kind of uh, bodily functions. Then there's a new state of mind. The mind that surpassed from uh, birth, aging, sickness, and death, right? So then you can truly understand what is overcoming birth, aging, sickness, and death. So before that, you think, hey, overcome sickness, go see a doctor, or you know, overcome aging, go see a beautician, uh, do, do some facial, right? And uh, you get younger. So uh, this is the circular kind of, kind of thinking. So of course, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, these are a few kind of explanations. Uh, it can get very technical. I don't want to talk about this, uh, uh, the Abhidhamma version of the various kind of consciousness. So this is the various states of mind in the Satipatthana Sutta, right? Many, many states of mind already. Okay, let me talk the next slide, please. And the same thing, the chorus will appear. So in this way, he remains focused internally and externally, right? So similar internally, that means your own, uh, own state of mind. 
and externally in general, like I mentioned, if a person is, uh, you know, has some sensitivity of mind or maybe some EQ, right, then uh, is able to be sensitive of other people's emotions. Uh, or he remains, right, focused on the phenomenon of origination and passing away with regard to the mind. Right, so similarly, uh, this is important step, right, observe the impermanence. And if you cannot observe impermanence, then uh, right, be mindful at least that state of mind is there. And uh, the whole idea is to develop non-clinging. You know, there are some people who are so attached to the, uh, to the steps of uh, Vipassana, then they say, or oh, must watch rising and falling, or must you know, separate uh, mind from matter. So they try to you know, uh, look out for these things and they forget to not cling. Right, so the mind is uh, always fixated and uh, uh, pushing and exerting, overexerting, and lots of stress, a lot of clinging. So the whole idea in meditation, uh, like I mentioned in the practical session, any kind of meditation you do, right? If you do it correctly, it should be peaceful and uh, enjoyable. You know? So uh, a lot of people, why after the retreat, they don't want to meditate, right? They go back. And then everything back to square one. Yeah. They don't be mindful anymore. Just enjoy themselves because there's no incentive in, in this uh, meditation, right? They do it wrongly. Then meditation is so stressful. And yeah, must, must sit long hours or must, oh, must watch this, watch that for long hours. Then no incentive to uh, meditate. So <clears throat> how successful is this retreat is actually... <laughs> How, how successful is the participant after this retreat that able to you know, enjoy enjoy observing impermanence at least, right? So this is the, uh, my benchmark of uh, success. Is if after uh, this retreat, you know, everyone's still back to square one, like before they come for this retreat, then I think it's, uh, it's a bit wasted. Uh, okay, so again, uh, when I want to comment on this uh, stock formula or this uh, chorus. Uh, last week, I mentioned uh, like a Zen poet, right? A Zen poem is just a metaphor. Like before, <clears throat> before we learn uh, meditation, right? before we learn Buddhism, you know, yeah? we see mountains as mountains. Right? So we see you know, body as body, feelings as feeling, mind as mind. So this is ordinary way of seeing things, right? If a person get angry, yeah, I get angry, law, no, yeah. So, so it's angry. Yeah, you see, it's angry. Or this body, you know, you look at this body. Or this body is uh, uh, healthy, maybe you know, ugly or beautiful, whatever it is. So we have normal ways of seeing things. Normal way of seeing things. So right now we are at this phase of training where the poet, you no, know, he wrote, seeing mountains as not mountains. Right? So what we are doing is actually this, right? We are seeing mountains as not mountains. So we, so we have to see you know, all this as rising and passing away. See as, see as the four elements, see as the five aggregates, see as the different uh, feelings, different uh, mental states, you know, rising and passing away. So we are seeing uh, <clears throat> the mountain as not mountain. No, we are seeing, we are adding you know, some uh, kind of contemplation right, to uh, break up this uh, attachment. Yeah, to the object. So this is uh, an, the next phase. And eventually, right, the final phase, right, let's say when the mind is really released, if the mind is, you know, sort of they completed the training and enlightened, then again, mountains are again mountains, right? So you can call whatever you want, you know, body as body, and say whatever terms and jargons, so it doesn't affect you, you know? no, no more clinging to any rites and rituals. You can use whatever name you want. So this is the, uh, <coughs> how do you call it? There are different phases of, uh, we call the evolution of spirituality. Right? So when the mind is more mature, then uh, there are different things to do. So right now, you know, we focus more on this uh, rising and falling, right? watching of impermanence. So this is an uh, important phase. Right? So the whole idea is not to uh, stop or not to let go of this uh, practice yet. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, deep uh, topic, which uh, 
I may want to talk about later, right? So uh, we are going to have some Q&A first. Any questions and, and answers at the moment? Any questions, okay. right? Now you all have a question, you all can unmute yourself and ask Bante. I think the previous uh, video, you know, there's some comments and uh, questions on the Facebook. Oh, okay. So you can bring over the questions to this uh, uh, session. Uh, Terence, maybe you would like to show video of all the participants so Bante will know who is speaking. Uh, now, now is uh, from the Facebook, is it? Anyone from the floor first? Anyone have question from Zoom? Bante, I have question. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, because I'm very, very new to meditation. So just okay. now you were saying... Uh, when we focus on the the uh, the nostril area, yeah, and then uh, you the second part after the the concentrate uh, uh, the concentrate uh, the what uh, we our mind is more settled already. Mm -hmm. uh, then we go to feeling feeling the heart hot and cold the four elements. So what about um, heart and soft? How do you feel breath heart and soft? What do you mean by that? Oh yeah, there is the, the density of the air. Yeah? So when you contact the skin, so the, uh, the skin has uh, some solid texture, right? The skin. Mm. Yeah? So, uh, so the breath, when you breathe in and out, sometimes it appears gentle, sometimes it appears maybe harder, you know? There are different density. So it's a kind of perception. Yeah, it's a kind of perception. So we, we just observe the yeah. hardness and the softness. Yeah. yeah, whatever sensation that is obvious to you. So if throughout the entire meditation, you never feel the earth element, that's all right. <laughs> then there's, then there's yeah, no earth I, element. I tried, I couldn't feel yeah. it. I only feel hot and cold. <laughs> ah, yeah, then, then, <laughs> that's good enough. That's yeah. <laughs> Whichever uh, sensation that's obvious to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's only, we're only focusing on this nostril area, not on the whole body, right? Not on the hardness <laughs> of the skin. If we are, okay. if we are doing the... Uh, uh, samatha practice, yes, yeah. If we are just doing, we are trying to develop this uh, one pointedness of the mind, yeah. Oh, so okay. the smaller the area, actually, the better, less a distraction, yeah. Okay. So, any okay. other kinds of distraction, maybe you know, your certain part of the body, maybe the neck itchy or the backside pain, or whatever. So, uh, all these we ignore, right? Any, How any, do you know when it's itchy, <laughs> it's fresh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If the mind you know, uh, tends to you know, run to those areas then we sort of uh, bring the mind back. Bring mm. the mind back to the object of meditation. Yeah, so it's called Samatha practice. Unless you do the uh, undirected form of meditation when the mind is open, you know, you're, you're, you're not fixated on one point, the mind, you know, wherever he wants to run, let it run. Yeah? He goes to the neck, goes to the bottom, goes where, let it go. Yeah? Mm. Okay, thank you. One, mm. one more question, uh, Bante. Uh, yeah. Just now you were saying when we are doing walking meditation, you walk fast, you walk slow, yeah. You can also fall asleep. I think I've, I've kind of that before. <laughs> <like. laughs> so ah, then okay. instead, uh, we need to have to focus on the right mental formation. I do, yeah. I do not get what is this mental formation. Uh, a mental uh, <coughs> uh, format. Yeah, There's a mental kind of uh, programming that we always talk about right thought, yeah? uh, non-greed and non uh, non-hatred. Yeah, So as long as whatever we do, there's uh, no clinging, that's correct. Mm, but uh, when you're doing the walking and uh, walking meditation, yeah. that means your your focus, your mind is actually uh, focusing on the non greed, non hatred, non delusion thing. Yeah, like like earlier on when we talk about the uh, breath meditation, are you able to calm the mind down? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, so can you maintain you know, this uh, process even when you're doing other things? Let's say walking. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is the training, you know, to bring this framework, mental framework into your daily activities me, of course me, you of course you don't have to focus when when walking and doing your chores no you, mm. you the whole idea is when we extend this attention to a wider uh unrestricted mind no? when we unrestrict the area to a wider circumference 
wider area. So how can we maintain a non-reactive mind? Right? Yes, we can uh, be aware of the, the food, you know, the rising and falling of the food, but how to do so in a non-reactive way? But when we when I went to learn this meditation, they asked us to like uh, up, forward, down, keep yeah, concentrating yeah, yeah. on that. So yeah, yeah. so your mind is actually talking to the foot in a way, right? That you're up. Yeah, you're correct, correct. Yeah. The yeah. So so the whole idea is to to observe, you know, these uh, uh, how do you call it uh, impermanence and also uh, the loving kindness kind of framework, the state of mind. So that whenever you move, whatever speed you move, if fast or slow, or however uh, you can split up into many different steps when you walk, right? Uh, whichever way you do it, then it doesn't have clinging. No, it still can maintain peace. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea, the objective is to uh, reach a non-clinging mind, right? So uh, eventually we call it, you know, some people call it a passive observer, right? So the, the more passive, the better, right? Non-reactive. Right. So if let's say a person does not have this framework, you know, doesn't have this framework of uh, uh, watching impermanence and, and uh, having loving kindness to settle down desire, then they can straight away, you know, just straight away start uh, do the walking, walking. Then it's no different from you know, teaching a child just do walking, walking. Then they think it's just acting only, you know, just uh, play, play in a uh, learning miming or whatever. Then they just you know, walk, walk, walk. Yeah? So, so no different. Right? So the whole idea is to have the right thought, no? the, the understanding must be correct, yeah, then you can you know, do whatever step you want. Okay, thank you. Uh, one yep. more thing is, um, uh, when we say, when we say, when you were saying we inhale, we wish the breath uh, well, and then when we exhale, happy. Yeah. Is there a phrase for this? Like, uh, they may all the hair be well, may all the hair be happy. But for mm. breath, how do we phrase it? Oh, just one word. Breathe in. When you breathe in at time, just say well. You know, breathe out at time, happy. Oh, no need. Yeah, because, because sometimes the, in, by the time you already breathe out. Yeah, right. yeah correct. You some, sometimes there might be a shortness of breath. Yeah? So you cannot uh, finish a long sentence. You just, uh, maybe one word will do. Well, happy. Well, happy. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Before I bring up the Epi que uh, questions from Epi. Oh, all enlightened already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No doubt. Eh? <laughs> okay, Abate. What do we do if out of body experience occurs during meditation? Is it wow, safe okay. to continue <laughs> meditating if out of body experiences? Happens several times. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, there are probably many factors to, to this, but uh, the to troubleshoot right first is uh, check your um, bodily condition and bodily posture. Right, we want to rule out uh, any possibility that it might be due to you no know, physical or medical kind of conditions. You know, sometimes. Uh, uh, you might hear this thing called uh, out of body for you know, near death experience. Near death experience. Maybe sometimes you sit in a wrong posture, maybe the pillow blocking the blood vessel in the neck or whatever it is. You know? Then sometimes your blood pressure low, then you feel maybe it's about you know, close to near death experience. Right? Then not enough oxygen go to the brain, not enough blood go to the brain or whichever organ. Then you, you know, you, but it's very peaceful, right? Then you're like either sleeping or meditating, then suddenly you feel like, you know, you're coming out of the body like that. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one way to check, you know, check your physical condition uh, or maybe they have any kind of medication. This is uh, another one might be uh, chemically induced. And there's uh, interesting, another research on the <clears throat> magnetic uh, kind of uh, frequency, right? Electromagnetic kind of frequency. So there's a project you can Google called God Helmet, G-O-D, yeah, God Helmet. I do not know why they named this kind of thing, God Helmet. So they, they have these experiments where they try to you know, put this helmet on and they introduce you know, uh, different kind of magnetic kind of uh, wavelengths to the brain and the, and the person in, you know, who is experiencing the, the guinea pig or whatever it is. 
will experience a lot of sort of, sort of uh, religious or spiritual experience, right? They feel like they can fly out, go fly out of the body or whatever not, right? So this is uh, might be another possibility. Maybe your place is near the antenna, you know, near the radio station or whatever it is, might be due to that. Uh, also, uh, might be you know. Uh, if I'm not wrong, eh, if uh, no certain meditation practices, they have this thing called the astral body. Astral body, right? Certain, uh, if let's say uh, your, your energy, you know, certain kind of energies in the body is uh, full, right? Then sometimes you might be able to sort of, uh, uh, you know, leave the body, right? So uh, <clears throat> if you have these kind of experiences, we call these uh, circular higher knowledges. Circular higher knowledges. Right, uh, it's good to not explore too much first. That means if you are sort of wandering out of the body, right, not to you know try to you know go to heaven, or <laughs> go to hell, go and explore too much, right? Uh, uh, we call this uh, you know you want to capo and have extra knowledge. Uh, if you are uh, well developed in let's say samadhi, then of course you're safe. You know you go up, go down. At least you have certain kind of protection, right? If you are uh, not well developed in your virtue, your merit, and your concentration, you go up, you cannot kidnap, or go down, cannot kidnap, uh, then, you know, then you get into trouble, right? So, uh, yeah, so this is the uh, issue. So, uh, some Westerners, they, they call this uh, alien abduction, right? Alien abduction. So, sometimes, you know, they feel their, this mind-body gets, you know, levitated, go up, and go into spacecraft, and whatever not. So, uh, there are some accounts of this. So, yeah, there are many people have different perception on it. Okay, so the whole idea is if you have this experience first, uh, you know, do a bodily uh, check to rule out any kind of physical uh, you know, danger or kind of uh, uh, health issues. Uh, then the next is if you happen to sort of, you know, uh, everything's okay and you're sort of able to uh, leave, you know, leave the body, right? The whole idea is come back to your meditation object. Right? If let's say you're watching the breath, come back to the breath. If you're doing chanting, come back to the chanting. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, next question. Is it better for a temporarily mentally ill person facing depression to chant a mantra or meditate to calm the mind? How can we guide him to be practice Mindfulness. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, this is a very uh, <coughs> interesting question. Yeah, because now uh, <coughs> the uh, current uh, medical, you know, the, the kind of uh, uh, the way they deal with mental health issues, especially in psychiatry or psychology, uh, that is actually one small, uh, we call it perspective of the uh, uh, treatment, right? There are many other kinds of treatments uh, in the uh, Buddha's time. <clears throat> the Buddha actually encountered uh, you know, several mad people, right? The two of more popular stories, there are two ladies who are mad. So after they meet the Buddha, they then become nuns, right? And they eventually got enlightened. <clears throat> so there are ways to sort of uh, uh, overcome or even uh, treat, uh, we call it mental, mental illness in a more holistic manner. Right, so uh, uh, I'm not saying to totally deny the, the Western kind of treatment. If let's say a person is over, you know, aggressive and violent, harming themselves, harming others, yeah, immediately they might need a jab to calm themselves down or whatever it is. So uh, certain kind of treatments are useful for certain scenarios, right? But if let's say the person is uh, well in control, uh, <clears throat> it's still good to uh, uh, we call it have a good counselor, good counselor. Yeah, and uh, depending on the teacher, you know how they able, how skillful uh, they are able to, you know, sort of uh, guide uh, the person. Right, it's good to uh, let your teacher know uh, what kind of illness you have, what are the issues, what are the background. Importantly, you know what is the background, uh, what causes, uh, you no know, certain uh, these kind of uh, mental conditions. Right, so at least they can uh, work uh, to find at least cure the root problem. Right? Instead of uh, you know, certain medication, they just cure the surface, just the chemicals, but doesn't cause the, uh, the real issues. Right? It's as good as taking uh, beer or alcohol. Right? Some people want to drunk, get drunk and try to 
escape from the problem, right? So uh, the whole idea is to treat the whole illness holistically. Uh, you know, uh, you need to talk to family members and friends. This is uh, important, right? To get them to understand you and uh, at least, you know, relieve some of the unnecessary kind of uh, tension, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so you want to talk about practice. Uh, if let's say, depending on what kind of illness, so this I have to maybe see the person personally, I cannot give a straight away uh, answer, but uh, whatever condition you have, the whole idea is the mind, again, the standard framework will be, I must have a non-greed and non-hatred frame mind. Yeah? That means uh, it's a middle way. So it's a lot of times when the person uh, let's say they have certain mental uh, instability, right? Then they start to want to pick up religion. Then sometimes they can't afford to attend a long lecture. Then they give a simple, uh, they just receive a simple instruction. I just chant this, just chant this mantra, right? So if they do not have the proper framework, they still have certain uh, uh, agenda or expectation, then they chant, 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 chant. Then they never calm the mind down, right? They do not know the, the objective is to calm the mind down. Right, so the more they chant, uh, then uh, you know, it might worsen the situation. Doesn't matter what meditation or doesn't matter what therapy. If the uh, objective, right, the mental framework is not correct, right, then whatever they do, it might worsen the situation. So the whole idea is to have a, a proper talk through, right? That means uh, have a proper understanding before you carry out any form of uh, uh, no treatment or therapy or whatever meditation. Yeah. Okay. Next, why is it difficult to let go of pleasant feelings even though we do not crave or refuse to cling to pleasant feelings? How can not, how can nothing and being aware of the present feelings help our mind not to be attached? Yeah, okay, this is a very good question. Uh, so if let's say the mind hasn't developed this uh, equanimity, right, either through uh, jhanic kind of equanimity or uh, vipassana kind of equanimity, then yes, you have difficulty uh, being detached from sense stimuli, right, be it pleasant or unpleasant kind of feeling, right, from your seeing, hearing, smelling, thinking, tasting, touching from all your sense experiences. So whatever that is uh, you know, pleasant, uh, the mind will naturally cling on to the, the next best feeling, right? Next best feeling. So if you do not have uh, you know, maybe a, a Samatha base or even a Vipassana base, then it's uh, you know, easily to, to cling on to you know, this uh, sense, uh, sense fear kind of uh, pleasure. And then you slowly fantasize and make movie out of it. You know? so, so this is uh, the normal way of uh, things happening around all the time. Right? So it uh, requires some uh, practice and training to develop, uh, require, have more foundation. Right. Okay, next. That's all for now. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. How about the current people on Zoom? All I say to us, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> okay, if there are no questions, then we can uh, proceed on yeah, with the uh, guided uh, meditation. Right? So this one, uh, since we talked about <clears throat> more time, so uh, yeah, this will be the time to do the practical uh, session. Right. Okay, so you find a comfortable uh, posture again. Upright uh, posture. And we relax our bodies. And then we can uh, close our eyes.
and give you some time to adjust your uh, body. So again, because this is a live stream, a live stream and a sort of a large audience, if people are viewing it. So uh, again, if I give instructions, it will be a sort of average or mean timing. Uh, so if, let's say I give instruction one, and if I proceed on to instruction two, and if you're not ready, you just stick on to instruction one, yeah? Okay, right, so uh, I see everyone is uh, seated. <clears throat> and then we can uh, start with again the uh, several steps of uh, meditation. So we are going to uh, start to feel, <clears throat> right? Feel the sensations from head to toe. Yeah, early on, we talked about the breath, right? The four elements. Uh, fire, wind, water. So now we start to feel uh, from the head and slowly sweep the attention down all the way to the uh, your feet. Uh, take your time when you sweep. Any sensation you feel in your head, right? Can be the four elements: earth, uh, hard and soft, kind of sensations, wind. Fast and slow movements, water, moist and dry, uh, fire, warm and cold. Right? So, any sensation you feel, there's no need to uh, try to uh, adjust them or try to block them or try to you know, get rid of them. Either there's uh, no need to cling, to pull, or to uh, attract them. Right? So, we try to uh, uh, practice the middle ground. Whatever happens, you just acknowledge, you know, wish you well and happy. Treat them as guests. Yeah, they come, they go. And then down to your neck area. And your shoulders. And your left arm. Followed by your right arm. Then down to your chest, torso area in your chest. And all like this, observe this rising and passing away. If you cannot feel the rising passing away, never mind, no need to be detached. And then down to abdomen area.
And then we now think of the back of the body, your spinal cord. Your shoulder blades. Right down to the tailbone. I wish every sensation well and happy. No need to fight with those sensations. Then your hip region and your pelvis region. Then we go down to your left feet and your left leg and your leg all the way to the feet and the toes. And then your right leg down to your feet and your toes. And we wish all these parts of the body well and happy. Right, whatever sensations that arise in all these parts of the body, right? You don't need to react to them. Just observe how they come and go. Okay, then next we come back to the breath again, right? So instead of thinking of the whole body, then we zoom in, right? Like this zoom session, we zoom in to below the nostril, above the upper lip. So no need to visualize anything, right? Just sense of touch. Don't, uh, don't coerce or force the mind there. Uh, gentle attention. And your breathing in and out, let it be natural, yeah? Your natural reflex action. Whenever there's inhalation, wish the breath well. Exhalation, wish the breath happy. So I give the example, right? If a person practice uh, this uh, samatha or one pointedness kind of practice, the uh, it's like imagine like going to a public transportation, right? A bus or a train, and it's crowded and full of people, right? So uh, let's say everyone in the, in the bus or train is. Uh, uh, talking or, or busy, you know, having conversation with someone else, you don't have to react to every one of their conversation. I right? don't have to uh, start a conversation with them or talk to them. So, so similarly, when we watch the breath, there can be thousands and thousands of stimuli going on around the body, you know, can be certain parts itchy, certain parts sweaty, uncomfortable, whatever it is. So uh, ignore them, right? Come back to the breath. 
uh, if the attention uh, somehow likes to linger to other places, uh, bring the mind back to the breath. Right. So the way to engage the mind is to uh, we quite have right effort, right right effort. That means uh, every moment apply the right thought. Right, you breathe in well, breathe out happy. Uh, it's not just for one second and you stop. Right, you have to keep on doing it. Okay, once your mind is calm and at peace with loving kindness, then you can apply the next right thought, which is uh, impermanence, right? Thoughts of non-greed. So every time you breathe in and out, right, the breath, uh, the sensations go through these uh, very micro cycles of birth and death. So you need to observe the uh, changes of the four elements in your in your breath. So the earth being hard and soft. Right? So when you breathe in and out, if there are any changes in the density of the air, then there's a birth and death of the earth element. Fire element being the warm and cold sensations. And breathe in and out, if there are any changes in the temperature, then there's a birth and death of the fire element. And the wind element is the movement, fast and slow, long and short breath. Right? So when you breathe in and out, if there are any changes in your breathing rate, then there's a birth and death of the wind element and the water element being moist or dry. So when you breathe in and out, any changes in the humidity, then there's a birth and death of the wind element. Right, so like I mentioned again, there's no need to purposely generate uh, those sensations. When you feel the attention at the one point below the nostril, whichever sensation that is most obvious to you, then you just take note right, of this uh, rising and passing away. This is uh, very important so that uh, the mind can uh, be detached right, with impermanence. So when the mind doesn't cling, it will uh, settle down as a result. Right, so by observing more of this uh, <coughs> non-clinging in a passive way, um, of course you need uh, your mental mantra to remind yourself to take note of this uh, rising and falling and continue to do it until the mind uh, settles down to this thing called stability point. That means the mind settles until it cannot settle further. So in uh, sam samatha practice also should have right mindfulness, right? As stated in the 
is uh, mindfulness in states of mind. Uh, even the concentrated mind yeah, also need to be aware of this impermanence. Okay, once the mind is uh, you know, relatively stable, right, everything is very settled, uh, then you can uh, quite familiarize yourself with this base point. Basically, is to uh, remember this emotion and uh, enjoy, enjoy this peace. and not forgetting to be mindful of the impermanence, the rising and passing away of the breath. Once you have tasted yeah, the peace and the emotion on the first level, or I mean the base level, then what we can do is we can make a wish to release this mind. Yeah? May I let go of this mind just like a child letting go of a balloon. So once you uh, release the mind, then what you need to do is uh, observe the transition without doing anything. Right. Observe the change of emotion. Right, so the mind will evolve naturally by itself to the uh, first uh, level of this concentration. Right, so when the mind has reached the first level, right, this pleasant emotion should manifest. Right, you should be able to uh, detect or observe this pleasant emotion. So you just, uh, if you are doing, doing it correctly, then be mindful of this emotion and simultaneously be mindful of the impermanence of the breath, right, to help the mind settle down.
Once you think your mind is calm and stable, then you uh, can familiarize yourself with the first level of concentration when the mind is calm. And basically is to uh, remember this emotion and enjoy. While not forgetting to be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Once you have uh, tasted the first uh, level of concentration, right, and when your mind is calm, then you can proceed by doing the same thing. You can make a wish. Yeah, may I let go of the first level of concentration? It's just like a child letting go of a balloon. And we just observe the transition of the emotion without doing anything, right? And the mind will evolve naturally by itself to the uh, second level. So once the mind has uh, reached the second level, a new kind of pleasant emotion should manifest. So you just be mindful of this emotion and simultaneously be mindful of the impermanence of the breath.
Once the mind is uh, calm and stable, right, then you can familiarize yourself with the second level of concentration. And basically it's to uh, remember this emotion and also enjoy yourself in it. And not forgetting to be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Once you have uh, tasted the second level of concentration, and we can uh, proceed by letting go of the second level and just make a wish. Yeah, may I let go of the second level of concentration, right? just like a child letting go of a balloon. So you just observe the uh, transition of the mind and the changes of the emotion. And once you uh, release the mind, the mind should evolve naturally by itself. Once the mind has reached the third level of concentration, then again, a new kind of emotion should manifest. So be mindful of this uh, pleasant emotion and simultaneously be mindful of the impermanence of the breath until the mind settles down.
And once your mind is calm and stable, and you can familiarize yourself with the uh, third level of concentration, right, basically it's to uh, remember this emotion and also enjoy while not forgetting to be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Okay, once you have tasted the third level of uh, concentration, then again, we can let go of this mind and make a wish. Yeah, may I let go of this third level, just like a child letting go of a balloon. We just sit back and uh, observe the uh, change of emotion, the transition of the mind. So when the mind is released, it will uh, evolve naturally by itself. So for those who, uh, who already joined in from right from the beginning and, and followed all the steps correctly, right? if you are at the fourth level and if you do it correctly, then the emotion should be equanimity. Right? There's no more uh, pleasure, no more happiness, no more joy. So it's a kind of a new kind of emotion. Right? And you just uh, be aware of this emotion while well, simultaneously be mindful of the impermanence of the breath to let the mind settle down.
if your mind is already calm and stable, then you familiarize yourself with the fourth level of concentration. And basically, it's just to uh, remember this emotion and enjoy yourself in it, uh, while not forgetting to be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. So the uh, called the peace and happiness, right, developed from uh, samatha practice, is uh, we call it self-sustaining or self-generating kind of uh, happiness, right? The uh, sense uh, sphere, right, kind of impressions. Earlier on, there's a question, right? Whatever, nice form, nice sound, nice smell, so on, so forth, right? These are worldly yeah, worldly kind of uh, happiness so the mind tends to run around so with this it gives the mind incentive to go inward So again, this is just a temporary kind of recharge of the mind, right? This is impermanent, right? Once you go back to a normal mode, the mind will scatter again, right? So just take this chance to uh, sort of enjoy and remember. <clears throat> then if your mind is calm, then you can uh, sort of bring your mind down. So now we go reverse order, bring the mind down, to the third level of concentration. So you just observe the transition, the change of emotion. And be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Right. Once you are at the third level and you're able to sort of differentiate right, the, between the fourth and the third, then you can again go down, yeah? reverse order, and make the eye go down to the second level of concentration. So you just observe the uh, transition of emotions and be mindful of the impermanence of the breath.
Okay, once your mind is at the second level, and you get to experience the uh, emotion, right? Then uh, you can reverse order again. Make a wish to go down to the first level. So you just observe the uh, transition of emotion when the mind goes down. And at the same time, be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Okay, once you're at the first level and uh, you experience the uh, transition, then you can make another wish to go down back to the base point, right, back to ground zero. Right, that means bring the mind back down to the one pointedness. So while observing the change of emotion, and you can um, be mindful of the impermanence of the breath. Okay, once you are at ground zero, right? I mean, it's totally no more uh, pleasant emotion, right? Just very bland emotion, then you can uh, bring the attention to the rest of the body, right? uncondition the mind again. Feel your fingers, feel your toes. as we uh, transit right to the next uh, phase of meditation so this is the uh, undirected <clears throat> kind of meditation so basically uh, this is another state of mind earlier on we direct the mind right it's a restricted mind and also the concentrated mind so now we are scattering the mind right making the mind uh, sort of un unrestricted so uh, <clears throat> this time we sort of let the mind uh, sort of wonder about freely. That means there's no need to fix the mind on one point, no need to exit the mind, don't direct the mind anywhere. Right. So let the mind sort of uh, autopilot. Right. So this is the uh, undirected kind of meditation. <clears throat> so basically we are extending the piece from one area to uh, you know, a larger area. So how to maintain this uh, framework. So when the mind loves to wander around, uh, your job is just to, <clears throat> uh, we call it do contact tracing, right? Do contact tracing. So your, uh, <clears throat> this mind or your attention can move around through six senses, six, uh, six points of contact, right? Your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, right? So wherever your attention goes, you just, 
no yeah i'll give an example if let's say i'm talking right most probably your attention is to my voice if i stop talking where is your attention now all right so every moment you have to uh, keep track right where is your attention where's your attention where's your attention yeah without any form of pushing without any form of exertion just let the mind be natural yeah the more natural the better because you have to truly understand <clears throat> the nature of the mind why are we uh, trying to observe this attention right <clears throat> because this attention is uh, the sort of the lens to our experience to the world right our <clears throat> ups and downs or our sorrows and happiness and pain all comes from this uh, experience through this attention we call it the five aggregates yeah <clears throat> five aggregates so basically this one will be covering uh, the next uh, dhamma nusati mindfulness of the dhamma or mental qualities <clears throat> so basically our attention uh, composes of five things yeah form feeling perception mental formation and this consciousness five in one so uh, for starters it's good to just pay attention to the uh, four elements call it the form any point of contact you just take note of four elements <clears throat> yeah it consists of everything consists of feeling as well actually you pay attention to elements right it has either a pleasant or unpleasant kind of feeling it has perception you call it a name you give it a label right what element is it so that is a perception and right? the moment the thought is being formed that's mental formation and right? now the attention arises and the last one, consciousness, that's the awareness. Are you aware with your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind, so on and so forth. So the whole idea is to uh, maintain a passive kind of mind. <clears throat> so uh, in order to help with this investigation, uh, we can ask ourselves three questions again. So the first question uh, being you know, using your own uh, personal observation or personal evidence, is this five aggregates, right? Is this attention? permanent or impermanent by itself so this is the first question and second question is this attention truly you truly yours right do you have total control over this attention or can you tell your feelings you know to be pleasant forever right tell certain element no stay uh, warm and cozy forever yeah you don't want to be humid or too dry or whatever it is you have total control can you tell your attention to be at one place forever
And the next question, the third question would be, <clears throat> right? If it's uh, if you try to exert control, this uh, attention, will there be suffering? Will there be tension? Will there be stress? All right. So the end goal is always uh, in the you no know, right mindfulness is to have non clinging, overcome stress, overcome suffering. Right. So the attention of the mind can be near, can be far, can be internal, yeah, within the body, the attention outside, right? So the attention is can be anywhere, anytime. Okay, then we can move on to the next phase of meditation is this uh, <clears throat> loving kindness meditation. All right, so uh, using uh, <clears throat> earlier on when we, talk, when we restrict the mind to the breath, that's like charging the battery of the mind. And when we undirect the mind, right? So it's like spending battery. So now we learn how to conserve battery, right? Conserve these, uh, uh, some of the samatha, some of the energy being built. So we're going to uh, use directional kind of meditation and we're going to wish me all beings in front, be well and happy. All right, so using whatever we learned, yeah, the five aggregates, how to direct the mind without exerting and without any kind of tension or stress. And then we come back to ourselves. Next, we wish all beings behind, right? Be well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And then we wish all beings on the left, may they be well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings on the right, May they be well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings above be well and happy. Then we come back to ourselves. And then we wish all beings B 
below, be well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. This time we feel this entire body with loving kindness. From head to toe, we wish every part of the body well and happy. And eventually we're going to wish all beings in all directions, above, below, and all across, be well and happy. So we first sort of enlarge the mind and we feel the entire house. May all beings in your house be well and happy. And then we can extend the loving kindness to the neighborhood, all beings in your neighborhood. Be well and happy. And we can extend this loving kindness to the entire country. May all beings in the country be well and happy. And then we can extend the loving kindness to the surrounding countries and the continent, and they be well and happy. And we extend the loving kindness to the entire planet. May all beings on earth be well and happy. And we can extend the loving kindness to all beings in the universe. May all beings be well and happy.
we try to maintain this uh, boundless loving kindness as much as possible. <clears throat> so even in the uh, Karaniya Metta Sutta, yeah, the discourse of loving kindness, the Buddha mentioned if a person were to maintain this uh, boundless <coughs> uh, loving kindness, be it standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, right? This is the highest conduct, right? So this is uh, one of the ways to practice mindfulness with uh, loving kindness in all postures, in all activities. So with that in mind, then uh, we can uh, gently open our eyes, right? Formally, we end the meditation, but mentally, right? We actually try to carry on the meditation throughout the entire day. So uh, you can wish your legs well and happy, right? Now I'm ready. Uh, wish your body well and happy. Yeah, you can move around, can do some stretching. Right, so it's uh, about three o'clock soon. Right, uh, you want to make any announcements? Oh, yeah, yeah the Q&A is later. Yeah? Okay, so yeah, we reserve it for the last segment. Right, so I leave it to you all for your self-practice. Uh, right, and then your own rest time, whatever it is. Okay. All right, any other thing, uh, announcements? Uh, only uh, we'll come back again at 4.15 Monday. Okay, 4.15. There's no all announcement right. for now. Okay, all right. So 4.15. Okay, thank so you see much. you all again. Okay, thank you. Bye. This session will off now. We'll come back again at 4.15. See you all later. Bye-bye.